attacked any survivors of the catastrophe to Baltimore, where the victims would receive the best care in doctors and unique places. The Crystal, the very usually responsible for linking the towns to Baltimore and Baradore every day, carried the new type of rescuer to the scene of the drama and brought back the survivors of the catastrophe. So Baranor suffered the ravages of a nuclear accident. But according to that film, the automatons you designed with hands should have helped save lots of lives, right? I'm afraid that's not how things went. Because of Captain Oban. Ah, that must be Sarah. Please come this way, Miss Walker. I'll introduce you. Miss Walker, may I introduce you to Sarah, my granddaughter. Nice to meet you, Sarah. My name's Kate Walker. I actually owe Miss Walker a candle. Thanks to her calmness and peace of mind, I'm still here and on my feet. She found my medication and gave it to me before it was too late. Donnerwetter! You don't mean you had another attack, do you? Ah, you're being so very naughty, Grandfather. You absolutely must let Dr. Zemiatine examine you. Come on, stay calm, my little child. When I go to the clinic to take the prosthesis to the young Yukol, I'll stop by and see the good doctor. Until then, why don't you make yourself really useful to Miss Walker? She's looking for some way to transport the Yukol caravan to the other side of the lake. Well, I think I've already found the solution. The boat in the film, the crystal, it must be the ship that's docked in the port. If it was able to transport the automatons you and Hans built, it could carry the ostriches across the lake. Ah, that's not a bad idea. But unfortunately, there's a slight problem of size, dear Miss Walker. What on earth do you mean? Obo became a poor wreck when he simply abandoned our automatons in Baranor. The coward now drowns his sorrows in vodka. He's convinced that he fled because of the monster in the lake. Heh! <laughs> Apparently the imbecile saw the monster, Himmelgott. So he went back on his tracks, abandoning all the automatons in Baranor, as well as the people they were there to rescue. Grandfather, I know you're still really angry with Captain Obo because he abandoned the automatons that you built with your friend Hans in Baranor. He was supposed to wait for them. They were going to take all the survivors they found in the rubble to the boat, and then bring everyone here to safety in Valsambor. But in the end, when he got to the beach at Baranor, and saw the disaster and all the dead, he became really afraid. The disease, the radiation. He must have had an uncontrollable panic attack, so he immediately turned back, dumped the machines on the crystal into the lake, and came back empty-handed to Valsambor. And the automatons have been there ever since, in hell. But who knows? Maybe today he'll want to sell. I'm sure Kate will be capable of convincing him to help the Yukels. All right, then. I'll try and convince Captain Obo. Thank you for everything, Mr. Steiner. I don't know if I really should wish you good luck, dear Miss Walker. Baranur is only an open grave now. Speak with young Sarah. She could help you. The captain is just there, next to the fireplace. Captain Obo? What do you want? May I 
sit down for a second? Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry to impose, but I actually really... You know, you kind of remind me of someone. The wife of the quartermaster that served on board the Crystal after the war. Do you realize he got married to the first cousin of the wife of a machinist? Oh, okay. That's all really interesting, but what I wanted to ask... <laughs> That's a really great story, really. Because did you know? So there. <laughs> so the guy answers, I don't know nothing, Captain. Turns out he was hiding in the broom closet. <laughs> Hilarious. Irina. The wife of the quartermaster, her name was Irina Malevna. Crazy how much you look like her. Oh, gee. It's getting late. I have to go. You can finish telling me the story another time, Captain Obo. The lake is haunted by a demon. It's watching me. Waiting. I can feel it. The crystal take across more travelers ever than any other ferry from Balsambor. Is everything okay, Kate? Not really. I'd like to ask Captain Obo if the Yukul caravan can go on board his boat to cross over to Baranor. But I can't get a straight answer. He's completely sloshed. I'm sorry, miss, but I really think you're wasting your time. He's getting drunk again to forget his crimes, like he always does. To forget he wasn't brave the way a captain should be. Can you believe it? In Baranor, he just picked up and abandoned his passengers. And I know, he'll never want to see that cursed place again. I'm not sure that's true, Vlad. Even if he does drink a lot, the captain's a pretty good guy. Say the right thing, and you may be able to convince him. If I'm ever lucky enough to find him sober, even for a moment, I need that drunkard to listen to me. Maybe I can help you with that. I'll make him one of my famous small restoratives. After that, he'll want to sleep for three days, but at least his mind will be clear. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much, both of you. Don't mention it. The way the Yukals are treated here is an absolute disgrace, so if we can help out... Has Captain Obo taken the crystal out of port since leaving Baranor? He's been far too drunk ever since then for that. And anyway, the port's been closed since the tragedy of Baranor 20 years ago. Do you think the crystal is still in sailing condition after all this time? I'm sure there'll be a few repairs to do, but Obo never stopped keeping it in shape, you know. He loves his boat, despite everything. Do you know why Captain Obo fled Baranor? He must have been completely traumatized by what he saw there. The catastrophe, the victims, and then the radiation. He unloaded the automatons on the beach, but he didn't expect they'd bring the survivors back right then. He just cracked, completely snapped. Full astern and goodbye all. Can you even imagine? Afterwards, he came up with that story of a sea monster appearing and attacking his boat. Yes, the old legend of the monster of the lake. Convenient, isn't it? Who knows what became of the victims and automatons the captain abandoned? No, everybody hates the captain for that. But nobody volunteered to take the helm of the crystal in his place to pick up the survivors. If there are any left in Baranur, they're all dead now, that's for sure. Grandfather says that the automatons would have broken down really quickly with nobody to maintain them. Go see the captain. Sarah will bring you the restorative when it's ready. Take this, Captain. This one's on the house. <laughs> oh my God! This pig! 
this water unbattens the hatches, swabs the deck, and opens the portholes. Hello, Miss. My name is Kate Walker, Captain Obo. We met each other earlier. To what do I owe the honor of your presence at the table of the regrettably famous Captain Obo? The captain seems rather depressed. It would probably be a good idea to go easy on him. I'm listening, miss. I have to stop the captain from rambling on. I'm gonna have to be firm. This is good news, Captain. You're back at the starting block again. You have a new beginning, a new dawn. <laughs> now that's a good show of spirit, Miss Walker. What'll you be having now? It's my round. The Captain knows he's despised in Valsambor. I'll tell him he can change all that. So what? Nothing more to add, then? Everybody here hates the Captain. I need to try to make him feel better. What I'd like you to do is to help me, Captain. I could even say you're the man of the hour. What do you mean by that, young lady? The Yukul Caravan has to cross the lake now. It absolutely must continue on its migration, do you understand? So I thought that maybe they could board the crystal. That way you could take everybody there to the other side, Captain. I know you don't have fond memories of your last crossing, of your departure from Baranor, but... Why the hell are you bothering me if everybody has already warned you about horrible Captain Obo? The gutless wonder. I can't let him start feeling sorry for himself. I gotta shake him out of it. Right. Go on. Ignore Obo, the gutless wonder. Poor Captain. I think a little sympathy might do him some good. Why are you still here if you don't want to talk? It's true, people are quick to judge. But they're not the ones who went to Baranor like you did. They can't teach you anything about being brave. Hmm, maybe. So tell me, where do you actually want to go then, miss? You won't like this. Stop going easy on me, would you? Where do you actually want to go, Miss Walker? We're going to Baranor. That's where the migration is taking the Yukels. Are you kidding? Baranor? In 20 years, nobody has landed. Nobody's even set foot there. I saw the hellish red eyes of the monster of the lake. Beast as big and long as my boat. Ask your Yukul friends what they think about it. They call it the Kilak. The evil spirit of the lake. The devil guarding the doorway to hell. He is really stubborn. I have to try something else. So you're just gonna stay there, are you? Wallowing in despair and alcohol? I... Don't you dare judge me! You have no idea what I saw that night. You're right. But the Yukels and I don't have a choice. We have to go to Baranur. And so instead of helping us, you're going to let us face the danger alone. No, believe me, miss. I wouldn't really be doing you any favors by helping you. Captain, please. I'm sorry, but it's no. Listen, Kate. Don't go giving up just yet. I'm pretty sure the captain can still be convinced. He seemed pretty categorical, I'm afraid. There must be some way. Go explore his boat. The crystal has always been like a home to him. Who knows? You may find something there that'll make him change his mind. Why not? I'll give it a try. Thank you, Sarah. The shopkeepers are on strike for the first time in ages. That's not good business for anyone, if you want my opinion. Excuse me.
Excuse me. What's happening here? Isn't it obvious? We're demonstrating against having the Yukul Nomads parked on our doorsteps. But what for? Since they came to Valsambor, there's been no end to the shoplifting and vandalism. And on top of that, their souk is taking our customers. Mayor Bulyakin has to do something, and fast. We're not leaving until he receives our delegation. But why won't the mayor talk to you? Because he's a schmuck. He wants the nomads to continue their migration as much as us, but he's too afraid of annoying his higher-ups. And while he's gaining time by playing both sides of the board, we're watching our sales go through the floor. The authorities are asking the mayor to prevent the migration from continuing? They want the Yukuls to stay blocked in Valsambor? That's what people are saying, but if you want my opinion, the only thing the mayor is waiting for is someone to get rid of those savages without him having to get his hands dirty. If you wish to make a deductible contribution to the Valsambor Shopkeeper Solidarity Fund, step right up. If you were only here to see this, Oscar. What exactly happened in Marinor? An accident in reactor number three. Negligence. Faulty maintenance. What do I know? Anyway, one spark was all it took, and then... total chaos. The rare survivors were brought back here, to the Valsambor Clinic. So you and Hans decided to build an army of automatons, to help all the people who were left behind still stuck in the rubble in Baranur. Yeah. Hans thought that helping the town that had opened its arms to his amusement park was a duty, and we would have managed to do it in the end, too. If only that coward Obo hadn't left our automatons to rust because of his so-called lake monster. The evil monster of the lake. Stories to scare small children with, Miss Walker. Not an excuse for cowardice. Mein Gott. Are you still angry at Captain Obo for abandoning your automatons? Ah, yeah. Hans and I put an awful lot of energy into making them all, you know. We thought of everything. How so? Our automatons were designed to tirelessly go through all the rubble, piece by piece, in search of survivors. Administer first aid, and then take them back to the beach so that they could be safely embarked on the crystal. But because of Obo, none of that ever happened. How did you meet Hans Varlberg? I met dear Hans when he had just arrived here in Valsambor, 20 years ago. What was he doing in the region? Oh, he didn't seem to have any particular reason. Always traveling. He stopped off here and there, then left again when the feeling came. Thank you for your help. You take care of finding a way for the ostriches to cross the lake, Miss Walker. I'll finish the prosthesis and take it to Kirk. Hello? Anyone here?
Hmm. No matter what the captain says, this part clearly shows he wanted redemption. I have to go back and talk to him about this. What on earth do you want with me now? I took a look at your logbook, Captain. I read what you wrote when you fled Baranor. So in that case, you know what I am, right? I'm damned and rotten to the core. Let me tell you something, Captain. I know that you need to redeem yourself. And I just may be able to help you do that. How in the hell? Take the Yukul caravan to Baranor in the Crystal. The migration must go that way. Baranor? That's impossible. You can't go to there anymore. Never again. Too much happened. Too many died. But also there, in the water. Captain, I think it's time for you to clear your head of all these fanciful stories designed to scare people. Everywhere in the world where the water is deep, people have come up with legends designed to keep children safe. Come on, get up, Captain Obo. Show me what you're made of. Hmm. Ms. Walker, first of all, I have to say that you're an incredibly stubborn woman. I'd even say that you're a real, um... Anyway, I'll stop there. But I get it. And what am I to conclude from your appraisals? All right, all right. You can get your gang of little savages and board the crystal. I'll take you. Oh, thank you, Captain, really. With all my heart. And thank you on behalf of the Yukels. Oh, but be careful now, Captain Girl. You're not there yet. There are two conditions, and they are negotiable. First, we stop by Nahodas. It's a little town just a bit south of Baranor. That will mean we avoid the most radioactive zones, but it won't actually take you too far off your path. And second, we also sail by day. I'm not going to finish up on the Lake Monster's Plate. And it sleeps during the day. At least it's usually a bit of a night owl, anyway. I accept, Captain Obo. In that case, all hands on deck now, sailor. Because we've got work to do before we can hoist the anchor. Come on, Kate. You hurry off and meet with the captain before he changes his mind. I'll go tell Grandfather to join you on board the Crystal with Kirk. Thank you, Sarah. 